Well, hello there, and welcome to Ask Allie, your go-to source for some amazing life advice with a metaphysical twist. I'm Allie, the host of the longest-running spiritual podcast on Apple Podcasts. That's right, since 2005, I've been helping people just like you navigate the mystical world of self-discovery, spiritual growth, and exploration. Today is Monday, August 21st, 2023, and I'm excited you're tuning in to give me a listen. Today, we'll be discussing disgusting, discussing the twisted path of trees. And if you love this episode, and I hope you do, and want to learn more, head over to outofbodyxc.com. There you'll find resources and information, including how to book a reading with me. And don't forget, if you're feeling extra generous, please give this episode a five-star rating, leave a review, and share it with three friends. Together, we can create a community of like-minded spiritual individuals who are all working toward creating a better life for ourselves and others. We are on Season 18, Episode number 30. The flash spell this week is Emerald Heart of Embrace. It's a love spell. And the workbook that goes with this episode is the Twisted Path Workbook. Now, remember, this week it's a dollar. The following week it goes up to $3, and that's where it stays. So, speaking of the magical item of the week, let's go to the Emerald. Yes. Now, the emerald, we're talking about either a cut emerald, like you'd find in a piece of jewelry, or a, um, a, a raw or rough emerald that someone just dug out of the earth. Um, the rough or raw uh, emeralds, you can find those easily on eBay or some other place, um, not for a whole lot of money. Uh, so, emerald. The energy is receptive. It represents the planet of Venus the element of earth. The powers it has is love, money, mental powers, psychism, protection, exorcism, and eyesight. Now, the emerald, in case you didn't know, was the original engagement stone uh, because it represents love and a good love between two people. Uh, The De Beers, and their marketing campaign, which I think started back in the late 1800s, brought the diamond to everyone's uh, view. And that's how the diamond became the uh, stone for engagement rings. But if you're really if you're really looking for love and you really love the person, make sure you have an emerald in that ring someplace. All right. OK, um, back to what we're doing now. If you, if you wish to bring love into your life, buy an emerald and charge it with your magical need through your imagination, perhaps by placing it near a green candle. After this ritual, wear or carry the emerald somewhere near your heart. Do this in such a way that it cannot be seen by others. Hmm. When you meet a future love, you'll know it wasn't the visible jewelry that attracted him or her. Emeralds are often utilized in business spells and rituals to promote sales and to increase the public's awareness of the firm. The stone is worn to strengthen the memory. It was suggested by the the pseudonym Alvarez Magnus in the 16th century, as well as to increase understanding and produce eloquent speech. Obviously, I'm not wearing an emerald right now. This stone not only affects the conscious mind, but also the psychic or subconscious as well, for it increases its wearer's wearer's awareness of psychic facilities. Because of this dual effect, the emerald is said to grant all knowledge of past, present, and future. Throughout the world, the emerald was worn or utilized in magic for protection. The stone was bound to the left arm with a string to guard travelers. Emeralds were given to possessed persons to exercise the evil entity within them. Um, it comes to be that many of these people were either epileptic or asthmatic. Asthmatic. I don't know. Asthmatic. There we go. Um, its soothing color caused emeralds to be used as gazing stones to relieve bleary, tired, or weak eyes and to relax the optic nerve and restore normal sight. Perhaps the most curious usage of emeralds comes from India, where ancient Hindu writings prescribed wearing the stone during sleep to to halt nocturnal emissions so that you don't fart in your sleep, (laughs) which is always good if you just start a relationship. For best results in magic, 
or so the old magicians recorded, an emerald should be set in silver or copper. And if you'd like to see a picture of the emerald and the different powers it possesses, a picture of it will be on this episode's post at outofbodyecstasy.com. Now let's go for the Oracle of Oracle Card Overview of the Week. Boy, I'm having a hard time talking today. For the week of August 21st, 2023. All right, we're using the Gateway Oracle Cards by Denise Lynn. Let's see what this week has set out for us. I know it's going to be a hot one in many places. Here in Ohio as well. I don't do well in hot weather. <laughs> I get a lot of migraines. I guess it's a good thing I never moved to California, right? Okay. Let's pull out three cards here. And of course, if you want to see a picture of the cards I'm pulling right now, card number one, they will be on this episode's post at outofbodyxc.com. And card number three. There. All right. So, card number one, which for today, Monday, and tomorrow, Tuesday, we have Stepping Into Stillness. My power is born in the majest majesty of silence. So it's really about looking within and trying to discover what it is you really want. And, you know, I, I feel like I, I'm, I'm saying this over and over and over again in these podcasts um, about people needing to make sure what they want. Because a lot of times, I guess, uh, people don't really know. <laughs> they think what they want is money. They think what they want is freedom. Um, what they think they want is a better job at a new company. But what is it they're really looking for? That's what Monday and Tuesday you're set out to discover. So Monday and Tuesday are not days to start something new, um, to put your plan into action. It's really a time to relax when you're not at work. Relax, look within, and be true to yourself and, and ask, what do I really want? The answer's in there someplace. You got to ask yourself, though. And then we have the card here for Wednesday and Thursday. Listening with your heart. I trust the messages I receive from my heart. So we're asking ourselves Monday and Tuesday, what do we really want? What is it truly that we desire? And then Wednesday and Thursday, we're listening to our heart and what our heart is telling us. Now, I know there's some smart aleck out there saying, well, the heart doesn't actually have words. Words is mouth. Ho, 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 ho. Well, <laughs> you know, your heart will talk through um, your soul or your soul talks through your heart, really. And you'll get messages, words, phrases, song you can't get out of your head. Those are different messages from yourself. Now, they could also be from guides. Don't get me wrong. But if you're questioning you, if you're looking at you and what you want, then the answers will be coming from you and not from some sort of outside source like a guide. All right. So Wednesday and Thursday, you're listening to what your heart is telling you. And then on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we have flying free. I unfurl my wings and fly. So we start putting into motion what we truly desire. What is the end game? What is it we want? I mean, granted, I know we all want to be happy. I mean, that, that's a given. But what is it that makes you happy, right? What what would it take to make you happy, to make you get out of bed, realize what's going on in your life and smile? What is that? That is the part that you're going to start executing on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That's what you're, you're going to start working for. So this whole week, really, it's about you and what you want and what you desire. 
and listening to yourself and how the heck are you going to get there? It's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So again, Monday and Tuesday is silence. You're asking yourself, you're questioning yourself, what do I truly desire? Then we have uh, Wednesday and Thursday. When you're listening to your heart, your heart's going to tell you. Your soul's going to tell you what you truly desire. Okay, so please listen. And then Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, that's when you start taking action towards the lifestyle you wish to lead based on the answers you got between Monday and Thursday. All right, so this is really an introspective week. Um, this is not the week, you know, you go asking everyone questions, um, unless it's a question to uh, get that lifestyle you dream of. Um, so, all right. Now, speaking of ourselves and doing what's best for us, the topic this week is the twisted path. And I'm talking about trees, not our actual life path, um, because all of our nobody nobody goes on a straight path in life. It's a, it's absolutely impossible, um, unless you are uh, laser focused on what you what you desire. And I thought about this uh, topic for this week because of where I used to live in Worcester when I had my house in Worcester. And I lived, the house was in the middle of a perfect triangle of three twisted trees, okay? And it was twisted at the root, and they were really cool trees. And I knew that that triangle, I just instinctively knew that this was a protection for me and Kyle. This protected us and the animals and all the animals I fed and, and everything. And when somebody bought the house across the street, they took down, they cut down the twisted tree. So that broke the circle of protection. And I remember as they were cutting it down, I looked at Kyle and I said, Kyle, we're going to have to move now. He's like, really? I said, yeah, they're cutting down the tree. And within weeks, um, my next door neighbor, his cat Raisin died. And Kyle and I really were hanging around to be next to Bob and, and Raisin to make sure he was okay. Raisin died. And I looked at Kyle, I said, Bob's going to be gone soon too, and we got to get out of here. And before I knew it, Bob died. Bob died on Valentine's Day. And I just, I knew as soon as that tree came down that it, it was time for us to leave. So we did. And that's when we moved out to No Man's Land and Shreve. Um, and then I got kicked out of Shreve because she wanted the family wanted to move back to the house, and that's how I got here to Akron. But the point is, um, I, I'm living around twisted trees again, and I'm so happy that I am. Uh, I didn't even choose this house because of the twisted tree. I just chose it. Um, but then I looked out my window last week, and I saw that I had a twisted tree right there, and I'm like, holy crap, this is perfect. All right, so that's my story behind why I picked this. So some anom anomalies have puzzled and memorized us in the vast tapestry of Earth's landscapes. Among the dense woods, stream valleys, and sprawling meadows, you might stumble across trees that just don't grow up, but twist, turn, and spiral toward the skies in a dance. These aren't mere quirks of nature. Some believe they might be signposts pointing towards places where our wor world vibrates at a different frequency. I definitely believe that. Welcome to the Twisted Path, where we venture into the relationship between these contorted wonders and the spectacular vortex energies they hint at. As we wander this path, we'll also unearth protective energies these sites might harbor. Are these spots merely oddities, or could they be Earth's secret sanctuaries where energies that rejuvenate, protect, and resonate on frequencies that beckon the spiritually attuned? So join me as we deep dive into this captivating uh, convergence of nature and the metaphysical, exploring what could be. So, section one is the Twisted Trees, Nature's Markers. Now, Nature often presents mysteries that defy mere curiosity observations, urging us to probe deeper into the why 
Among such secrets are twisted trees. These are formations that deviate from their typical upright growth to exhibit a spiral or contorted patterns, seemingly dancing to an invisible tune. From the gnarled olive trees of the Mediterranean to the contorted bristlecone pines of North America, twisted trees are not just restricted to one region or climate. In Australia, the snow gum trees in the Alpine relig religions regions sometimes display spiral trunks. Similarity, in part of Scandinavia, certain birch trees have been found to have, what, twisting tendencies. Beyond their obvious spiral growth patterns, these trees often share remarkable resilience. They thrive in areas where many other trees might struggle, suggesting an adaption to a specific, sometimes harsh, environment. Due to its twisted grain, the wood of these trees is often denser and more resilient to certain pests or disease. These trees often become focal points in their environments because they look so cool. Their twisted forms capturing attention and sometimes local legends. In every corner of our planet where nature deviates from the ordinary, human imagination endeavors to bridge the gap between the seen and the unseen. The phenomena of twisted trees is no exception, of course, for these wonders have etched their mark in not only landscapes, but also in the hearts and tales of local communities. In many indigenous cultures worldwide, trees have always been revered, not merely as living organisms, but as entities bearing wisdom and memories of the land. When such trees contort in ways that defy conventional understanding, their significance amplifies. For some, these spiral trunks are the physical manifestations of ancient spirits, guardians of knowledge, time, and stories passed down across generations. They stand as symbols of continuing continuality, resilience, and adaption, watching over the lands they've occupied for centuries. And let me tell you, that tree that was across the street in Worcester, that, that was cut down, it was huge. It was a very old tree. I'm still bad at those people, but it was their house. <clears throat> All right. The twisted trees with their gnarled barks and often sprawling roots are considered sentinels of sacred sites by many cultures. Their very presence is thought to deprecate areas of spiritual significance. Native American lore is rich with such associations. Some tribes believe these trees, merely when found in alignments or in particular patterns, mark the trails to crucial ceremonial grounds or ancient meeting sites. They serve as natural signposts, guiding the way to communal gatherings, worship, or reflection places. Venturing across the Atlantic to the dense woodlands of Europe, twisted trees are enveloped in entirely different tapestries of tales. In Celtic legends, for instance, forests have always been places of magic, home to many mystical creatures. Twisted trees, in particular, are believed to be favored dwellings of the Fae, elusive Entities that dance between the veils of our world and another. Such trees might be seen as portals, thresholds, where our reality blurs into the ethereal realm. Whispers in certain parts of Eastern Europe speak of forest spirits known to protect the woods and their creatures, choosing twisted trees as their abodes. Passerbys are often advised to treat these trees respectfully, lest they offend the spirits residing within. Otherwise, don't cut them down. At the crux of understanding these trees lies the question, why do they grow this way? Scientific explanations range from genetic mutations to external environmental stresses. Some researchers point that persistent strong winds in one direction would cause young trees to adopt a spiral growth. Others suggest that certain pests or disease might cause a tree to grow twistedly as a defensive mechanism. Yet, as the logical and the scientific explanations might sound, they only sometimes fit neatly within every observation. Some twisted trees grow in areas devoid of strong winds, and others thrive in soils with constant nutrient distribution, with consistent nutrient distribution. This has led some speculate. Could a deeper, unseen force influence these trees? like I think, a geometric force or perhaps the energetic pull from vortexes they're rumored to signify. Therefore, the narrative of twisted trees remains one that is partly scientific and part speculative wonder. It invites us to consider both the tangible and the intangible 
reminding us that in nature, not everything can be neatly explained or categorized. Some mysteries, like twists and trees, continue to stand tall, urging us to question, explore, and marvel. So guys, when you're going out and about this week, and you're being very introspective, because that's what the cards call for, look out for twisted trees. See if you have any around you. And if you are lucky enough to have some around you, and you can get to them safely and without breaking any laws, give it a hug. The trees emit a wonderful, wonderful energy. I am convinced, of course, that these trees are magical, that they are vortex, that they lead to magical places, um, and that they're very protective of the people who are around them. And I guess here we are at the end already. I want to thank you for hanging out with me at Ask Alley today. I hope you enjoyed the episode and, and realize how valuable it is for you to live near or be around a twisted tree or two. Remember, this week, the workbook is only $1. If you like what you heard, please take a moment to rate and review the episode. The more people who listen equals the more people I can help have their aha moments. And speaking of helping others, don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Wisdom for even more tips, tricks, and inspiration. And last, but certainly not least, if no one's told you today, let me be the first to say it. You are fabulous. Take care of yourself and have a magical week. I'll catch you next time.